Hello, this is Reza Rad from Radicat. In this video, I'm going to talk about one of the important but very basic uh, concepts of Power BI relationships, uh, which is creating a shared table or what we call as a shared dimension. And I will show you show that to you in a Power BI example, how we can use Power Query to build that example. And why do you need to do that instead of creating many to many relationships? We will talk about all of these. Let's go and check it out. Uh, so often when you use Power BI, you have the requirement to create relationship between tables. And that requirement sometimes uh, can lead into normal relationships that you create, which is like one to many, many to one, uh, which usually are the most common type of relationships and the relationship flows directly through that. But sometimes you may need to create many to many relationship. Although it is possible to create that in Power BI to create many to many relationship, it is not recommended. I'm going to show you an example that uh, uh, you will need a situation like a many to many relationship, but I will show you the right way of doing that. So let's go into this example and I'll show you how this is going to work. So I'll go into my desktop view, right? So here you can see my desktop view. Let's go and open this Power BI. Um, desktop. So in this Power BI desktop, I want to go and uh, get data from an Excel file. In this case, my Excel file is in here. So I'll just go and copy the URL for this. Um, so let's say get data from Excel. Um, and in this example, I'm just using this as a source. So uh, imagine I'm building a solution that gets data from uh, three different sources, one from sales, one from purchasing, another from manufacturing, th things like that, that uh, has different data. And in this Power BI solution, I want to analyze them all. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll go and select these tables. You see I have inventory, manufacturing, and sales. I'll go and select them all. And then I'll say, let's load this into Power BI. I wouldn't do any transformation. I think they are all uh, pretty fine, nothing speci specific about uh, creating transformation here. Once I bring this into Power BI, this would be like totally different data. Now, in this case, I brought all of them from an Excel file, but sometimes you, buy, you get some of these, uh, one of them, for example, from a CRM online, another from, from a SQL Server database, another one from a REST API, or one from Excel source in OneDrive for business. It doesn't matter where you get that from. When you bring it into, inside Power BI, you may need to create a relationship if you want to get these data to be sliced and diced together at the same time. Uh, and that is what I've got to show you how that relationship really is going to work out. So once Power BI loads this data into, uh, into the desktop, uh, I can go ahead and create normal visualization using each of these tables. And for that, you don't need a relationship, but once you want to Com combine them together in a uh, in a visual or a set of visuals, you would need a relationship. So let's go and see what these tables look like. So the tables are already uh, loaded into the model. Um, you see these are my three tables. I'll go to the model view um, so that I can see these three tables in here as well. You see these are the three tables. They are not connected at the moment, which is okay. I'll just keep it like that. Let's say I would go and create a table visual uh, for simplicity. For all of these, I would use a table visual in this case. So this is a table visual that has the date field in here, uh, the product name, quantity of the products, and the revenue, right? So let's say I have all of these visualized inside a table visual. Uh, while that is doing it things. I would also create another table visual which shows uh, the date, the product, and the cost of manufacturing, right? So two table visuals and one last table visual here as well. I want to have one for each of these, uh, for each of these tables. Um, so also showing all of these plus the warehouse information. So I have all of these. Now the idea here is that I want to be able to select a product using a slicer and that product filter uh, all these three tables, right? 
Um, as you see, these are, let's make it smaller, uh, sorry, let's make it bigger. So as you see, these are all having product information in it. And uh, some of these product informations are similar across all of these. Like for example, I want to select product number 20 and get everything filtered in here. If I go and create a slicer at the moment, which table should I use the product from? And if I select any of these, only affect that particular table. So I would need to go and create a relationship. So what I'll do is I'll go and let's say I would create a relationship between some of these tables. In this case, between these two products um, in manufacturing and inventory, based on the product, I would create a relationship. Once you want to create the relationship, uh, this understands that we don't have uh, unique values of each in each of the tables, so it comes up with this suggestion that is called many-to-many -many relationship. Many-to-many -many relationship is mm, is what is a type of relationship we call it as a weak relationship. It's a relationship that we do not normally recommend because even if you can create it, let's assume I did create it, right? Let's say I create it. Even if I create this, there is no single source of truth uh, for the product values, right? So still I have to go and select product from uh, one of these, right? And if I get and select uh, one of these in my visualization, the other values that I have in the other table that are not in that, um, uh, in that field, they will not be there. So if I select inventory uh, product, so let's say which one is inventory, I think inventory is by the way, um, this last one, right? Uh, so let's say I'll bring product from the inventory into this slicer. So when I do that, uh, it shows me only those uh, and I go and select that. Let's say I select product number 34 and uh, then everything in here in these two tables because I haven't created a relationship with the other one gets filtered by product number 34. Uh, which works fine, but as you see here, I have products. Let me zoom in so that you can also see this part a little bit better. Uh, I have some products in this, such as product number 75, which I don't have it in here. And because I brought the product field from this table, the inventory table in here, I'm missing that. If I bring product field from the manufacturing table, I'll probably miss some other things, right? The, the problem here, the main problem is that we don't have a reference table. We don't have uh, a table that you might call it master data for product. We don't have a table that has all the products in it. And this table is what we call in a uh, data warehousing terminology, we call this table uh, like a dimension table, a table that has descriptive information about the product table. And this uh, fields of this table would then um, have information of the product table. And then you would use that in a slicer. So that would filter every other tables. In this case, because we don't have that situation, so everything uh, wouldn't work. So even if we have both directional relationship, even if we have many to many relationship, even if we create another one with the sales, still we have the same problem. So this is not really going to solve our problem. So the way to do it is to create that table, that dimension, which we call it also a shared dimension. So I remove that. I'm going to show you how to create that shared dimension. There are many different ways you can create that. Sometimes you have a data source that you can get data from it. Like for example, your shared um, dimension source is from your CRM database. You get, that, you get that from there. But there are situations that you don't have it, like this situation that we have right now. There is no single source for product table. So what I'll do is I will actually combine these three tables to come up with something like that. Uh, to do that, first I would make sure that they are all having a column called product. In this case, this is called product name. So let's also rename this and call this product. So now I have this called product, that called product, that called product. The product is in different uh, order of the columns in each of these, but that doesn't matter. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to combine all of these together. There are different ways that you can combine tables together. There is, there's a method called merge, which we would link tables based on an ID and would get other fields added to that. Another way to uh, combine is append where we would add the rows after each other. All of those would be in a big concatenated list. And that is what we want to do, the append. So what I'll do is I'll go and say append queries as new. Um, this is the option that I would use so that I would combine these tables together. Uh, as I said, I have a separate video talking about the difference between append and merge. I highly recommend go and check it out to understand 
understand how these are working. In this case, I'm appending all the three tables. So inventory is already there, manufacturing and sales. Let's add them in here as well and append. What append does, it will actually add all of the tables after each other. The, uh, the columns that are similar, you would have them uh, having all the values, in this case, product column um, or, or date column. But for example, warehouse was only in one of the tables, so it is null in the other tables. Or quantity was in only uh, a couple of tables, it is null in the other tables, right? In this case, I don't really care about all of those columns. I don't even care about the date column. I just want the product column. So I'll select that and I say remove other columns. So then I would have my product. Um, column in here. Now there are ways that you have to um, do some transformations to make this list a unique list that doesn't have duplicates in it. Because this is a text value, so first I would do some transformations such as for example making everything uppercase because um, Power Query is case sensitive. If one of them is lowercase, one of them is uppercase, it wouldn't understand um, and these are the same values. It would consider them as two separate values. So I make them all uppercase, then I would say transform and trim. That would remove all spaces before and after. And then I would right click and say remove duplicate. So all of these steps leads into creating a list of products that are unique. Uh, once I have created that, I would call this product table. Now I have to do something similar to this with the date table as well. But with the date table, normally we don't go and create that based on an append. Um, normally for the date table, you can create that date table or you already have that date table somewhere in your model. In this case, I'm going to use my date table um, from uh, a script that I have. You can download this script from another video I have about um, creating a Power Query MS script for, uh, for the date table and use that. Let me see what are the date fields here. They are mostly in 2019, so that is what my date table is going to be. Okay, so yep, let's go and create that. Uh, so I'll create a new blank query. I use this, um, I use this M script over there to create my date table. Uh, ideally, you want this date table to be in your lake house, in your warehouse, in your data flow and reuse it. But in this case, I'm just using it uh, from here. So let's say from 2019, let's generate it all the way to, to this year, right? So this would generate the date table for me. Uh, and I'm going to call this date. Uh, the script you can download it. That's pretty much it. Now uh, I can close and apply so that these tables would get loaded into Power BI. Now Power BI has this configuration that you can change it. One of the things about the configuration in Power BI is that it would try to automatically detect the relationship. So if you are loading uh, new tables, it would try to create relationships based on those. Sometimes it can be helpful. Sometimes it may be disturbing creating relationship, not the right way. Let's see what it does. If it doesn't create it in the right way, we'll go and create it ourselves. So ideally we want these dimensions to have one to many relationship to the fact table, which is what we call a star schema. Again, I have a separate video about that. Uh, it seems that the relationship is somehow picked. Let's go and check it out. So I have the product table here. You see this product table is basically filtering all the three, ta three tables. I'll just put it in this way so that you can see. So these tables, sales, manufacturing and inventory, they are like what we call as a, um, as a fact table. They have information that we want to visualize in our line charts or summarize them, aggregate them. And product table is what we call as a dimension table. This is what we use in our axis of the charts or in the slicers. And as you see, it has a relationship one to many uh, to each of the fact tables. And we can have similar thing using the date table too. So I'll bring the date table over here. And then I would create the relationship between that using the date field. Same kind of relationship. Um, now, sometimes you use the actual date field to create a relationship. Sometimes you use what we call as a date key, which is like a numeric representation of a date field, which is like four digits for year, two digits for month, two digits for day. That is most common, commonly used inside the data warehousing concepts, uh, but it would be a still um, the same thing as well. Uh, okay, so wondering why this tried to create one-to-one -one relationship. It should be one-to-many relationship and it should not be both directional, it should be single directional. 
Uh, as I said, sometimes the relationship tries to understand it based on the field. In this case, because I did it, I did have unique date fields in my manufacturing table. That is why it tried to create one-to-one -one relationship. Um, in this case, also I change it to one-to-many, and this changes to single relationship direction. So now I have what we call as a full star schema situation that we have these um, fact tables in the middle. In this case, each fact table has two dimensions connected to it. One, one of the dimensions is date, the other one is product. Uh, some of these fact tables might have other dimensions around it, but they are fully a star schema design already. Uh, then I would also go and hide some of these um, product um, columns and date columns that I have in, in those. So that would then make it easier to always select product from the product table. So to do that, I can come here and I select the product in inventory, product in manufacturing, and product inside the sales. When I select all of these, I would say is hidden, is true. That is one way you can make multiple columns hidden. Property set, uh, I think I didn't set, select the inventory one. So let's do that as well. And so that's that. Then I would do the same thing for the date. My computer is a little learning a little bit slow because of the recording device that I'm using at the moment as well. Uh, but let's select that. So date field in each of these three and then making sure that that is also hidden because I have a date field in, in my uh, date table. So as a result, my, mm, my fact tables basically just have the numeric values that they are showing, the cost and things like that. Uh, let's go to the visualization section. In this visualization section, I'll remove the product field that comes from this slicer. And, and the product field in this slicer that comes from that wrong table, but this time I get it from the product table, right? That is where it should come from, right? Uh, and it has all the products in it. And in each of these tables also, instead of the date and product that I selected from those tables, I can get the product and the date from the right tables to show over there. Um, I obviously have some videos more about like what fields are good candidates to hide, what fields are not, but, but you get the point here, right? I can go and select any of these um, products and it would start filtering all of these three tables. Same with the date. If I have a data slicer here, uh, that would also filter all of these three tables. So without the need to go to create the both uh, the many to many relationship and both directional relationship, which would have been a big uh, challenge in our design. Um, it wouldn't give us a reference table or a master data table or a shared dimension table. Uh, now we have created that shared dimension using um, power query. This power query process can be done in data flows so that you can prepare your data before loading it into a lake house or warehouse if you are using those fabric objects. And then this dimension would be the source of uh, truth for your product table or any other tables that you want to use as a shared table between multiple fact tables. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked this video, go ahead and subscribe into our YouTube channel. We have weekly videos of Power BI and Microsoft Fabric. Until the next video, bye. Thank you.